ভাবিছে বলেছি মানে আজকে আজকে ঠিকঠাক আছে তো আর কি ওটাই দেখা আর কি আমি তো এটাই বলি যা আতঙ্কে নয় আনন্দে থাকুন সতর্ক থাকুন কবিগুরুর ভাষায় অন্তরের শক্তিকে দমে যেতে দিও না আর যদি আতঙ্কে হয়ে যায় তাহলে তো ইমিউনিটি উইল গো ডাউন ইমিউনিটি উইল অটোমেটিক্যালি গ্রো আদারওয়াইজ অল ফুডস উইল গো ইন ভেন জয় this national webinar on the history of english language and language teaching uh, we have with us the august presence of uh, dr atarupa sen our invited speaker who is distinguished for her remarkable expertise in this topic uh, but before i introduce her i would request our honorable principal dr vinal kanthi chatrapati to inaugurate this webinar uh, with his kind words so sir Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today is a memorable day, the Guru Purnima. Even in the day of Guru Purnima, I am a Guru Purnima. 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 এবং আমার ছাত্র জীবনের সে সব শিক্ষককে আমি আজকে শ্রদ্ধা বনত চিত্তে প্রণাম জানাচ্ছি গুরু হচ্ছে সেই যিনি অন্ধকার থেকে জ্ঞানের আলোতে আমাদের নিয়ে আসেন হি হু লেটস ফ্রম দ্য ডার্কনেস টু লাইট ইন দ্য গুরু যাই হোক থ্যাংক ইউ টু এইচ অ্যান্ড এভরি if you for the beginning here with us today i do hereby welcome the respected speaker chaturupa sen guest and delegates and students who are present here from the different part of the country to grace the occasion of our two national webinar titled the history of english language and language teaching organized by english department of our college special thanks to shalu adhikari vidhan mandal minakshi pal bajoraj pal chandrata pun pal and somnath dotto epidemic has been going on since the last year it has had a profound effect on the life of the nations আজ আমাদের জীবনের এমন কোনো ক্ষেত্র নেই যেখানে এই অতি মহামারী তার ভয়ঙ্কর থাবাকে ফেলে রেখেছে আওয়ার হায়ার এডুকেশন হ্যাজ নট বিন লেফট আউট এখন দেখা যাচ্ছে যে কলেজ ইউনিভার্সিটিতে কোনো পড়াশোনা হচ্ছে না যেটা হচ্ছে যে ট্রাডিশনাল ওয়েতে পড়াশোনা হচ্ছে না 
everything is happening online a online er madhyame te study hocche examination hocche all happening online mode kintu koto khani chhatro ra upokrito hocche amar kache je ta jotheshto sandho sandho ache dudher sath amra ghol metachi eta ekta khetre amader khub upokar hocche সেটা হচ্ছে ওয়েবিনার সেমিনার ওয়ার্কশপ আর হ্যাপিনিং অনলাইন থ্রু মডার্ন টেকনোলজি আজকে এই মডার্ন টেকনোলজির জন্য আজ আমাদের এই ওয়েবিনার গুলো আমরা করতে পারছি এটাই হচ্ছে একমাত্র লাভ কিন্তু টিচিং ছাত্রদের জন্য যে টিচিং সেটা যে কতখানি হচ্ছে তাতে কিন্তু আমি আবার বলছি যে আমার কিন্তু সন্দেহ আছে কিন্তু একটা ক্ষেত্রে আমরা ইতিবাচক দিক আমরা দেখতে পাচ্ছি সেটা হচ্ছে যে এই সতরূপা ম্যাডামের মতো ম্যাডামদের যারা সুদূর সে নালন্দাতে থাকেন রাজগিরে থাকেন সেখান থেকে তাদের এখানে আমাদের কলেজে আসা খুব সময় সাপেক্ষ ছিল অনেক কিছু ব্যাপার থাকে কিন্তু আজকে আমরা এদের মতো পার্সোনালিটিকে আমরা কিন্তু এই ওয়েবিনারের মধ্যে পাচ্ছি এটাই হচ্ছে মানে কি বলো সব থেকে ইতিবাচক পজিটিভ দিক এতে কিন্তু কোনো সন্দেহ নেই ম্যাডামকে জানাচ্ছি যে আওয়ার কলেজ কান্দ্রা রাধাকান্ত কুণ্ডু মহাবিদ্যালয় was established in 2001 there is a remarkable change of the college in the last few years in all respect our college affiliated of pardavan university it is duly recognized by the uh, ugc under section uh, 2f and 12b under the ugc rule the college is situated in the district of uh, bardwan in the southern part of the rod of bengal এখানে কিন্তু আমাদের আমার মনে রাখতে হবে আমাদের কলেজটি যেখানে প্রতিষ্ঠিত সেটি কিন্তু ঐতিহাসিক দিক দিয়ে তার কিন্তু সাংঘাতিক গুরুত্ব আছে কারণ এই কান্দ্রা হচ্ছে আমাদের মধ্যযুগের ফেমাস বৈষ্ণব কবি জ্ঞানদাসের জন্মভূমি রোমান্টিক কবি যে রোমান্ট যে রোমান্টিজম নিয়ে ইংরেজি সাহিত্যের অনেক বড় বড় কিছু লেখা হয়েছে তখন তো আমাদের দেশে কোনো ইংরেজ আসেনি আমরা তো নবজাগরণের ধারায় আমরা নিজেদেরকে জারিত করতে পারিনি কিন্তু সেই যুগে দাঁড়িয়ে চৈতন্যের সময় বা চৈতন্যের পরবর্তী কালে একটা মধ্যযুগে দাঁড়িয়ে এই কবির হাত থেকে লেখ বেরিয়ে এসেছিল এমন অজয় পথ এমন কালো জয়ী পথ যেগুলো আজও আমাদের অন্তরকে বর্ষ করে বধু তোমার গরবে গরবিনী আমি রূপসী তোমার রূপে হেন মনে করি ও দুটি চরণ সদা লইয়া রাখি বুঝি এই যে হৃদয় থেকে যে নিংড়ানো যে ভালোবাসা এই যে রোমান্টিজমের যে একটা ধারা আমরা তো বলি যে ইংরেজরা না এলে নাকি আমরা শিক্ষিত হতে পারতাম না ইত্যাদি ইত্যাদি নবজাগরণ যদি না আসত ঊনবিংশ শতকে যদি নবজাগরণ যদি না আসত তাহলে পরে আমরা এই রোমান্টিকতার স্পর্শগুলো আমরা পেতাম না কিন্তু আমরা তো আত্মবিস্তৃত বাঙালি আমরা তো অতীতকে ভালোবাসি না বঙ্কিমচন্দ্র সেই জন্য দুঃখ করে বলেছেন যে আমাদের কোনো ইতিহাস চর্চা নেই ইতিহাস চেতনা নেই যদি আমাদের ইতিহাস চেতনা থাকতো তাহলে পরে আমরা জ্ঞানদাসকে ভুলতে পারতাম না ওই যে একটু আগে বললাম বধু তোমার গরবে গরবি নি আমি রাধা কৃষ্ণকে বলছে যে তোমার গরবে আমি নিজেকে গর্বিত মনে করছে রূপসী তোমার রূপে তোমার রূপে আমি নিজেকে রূপ রূপবতী করে তুলছি এই যে রোমান্টিসিজমের যে ধারা এই ধারা কিন্তু আমাদের এই কাঁদরাতে এসেছিল প্রত্যেকটি সাহিত্যেরই একটা নিজস্ব আঙ্গিক আছে ইতিহাস আছে আজকে যে আমাদের ইংরেজি সাহিত্য নিয়ে যে আলোচনা হবে তারও তো একটা বিরাট একটা ইতিহাস আছে সেই অ্যাংলো স্যাক্সেন যুগ থেকে যে ধারা চলল একেবারে বা চশার যুগ থেকে শুরু করে এসে যখন আমরা এলিজাবেথের যুগে এসে পৌঁছে গেলাম এলিজাবেথ কিন্তু সে মধ্যযুগেরই মানুষ তখন আমরা দেখতে পাচ্ছি যে ইংরেজি সাহিত্যের একটা ব্যাপক একটা আরোরণ সৃষ্টি করে দিচ্ছে আমরা সেই সময় শিক্ষা ক্ষেত্রে এলিজাবেথের সময় যে শিক্ষা ক্ষেত্র সেখানে আমরা উন্নতি দেখতে পাচ্ছি 
তার আমলেতে বহু স্কুল প্রতিষ্ঠা হচ্ছে যেমন রেপটন মার্সেন্ট ট্রাইবলার রাগপি উবিংহাম হ্যারো এগুলো কিন্তু প্রতিষ্ঠিত হচ্ছে ইংল্যান্ডের ইতিহাসে যদি আমরা পড়ি একই রকম ভাবে তখন বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ে সম্প্রসারণ হচ্ছে এলিজাবেথের সময়ে বিজ্ঞানের উন্নতি ঘটছে টমাস হ্যারিওয়েট গণিত শাস্ত্রে জন ডে উদ্ভিদবিদ্যায় উইলিয়াম টর্নার এদের নাম বিজ্ঞান চর্চার ক্ষেত্রে একটা গুরুত্বপূর্ণ ভূমিকা মানে ভূমিকা হয়ে আছে এবং সব থেকে যেটা বড় কথা যে তার সময়েতে ইংরেজি সাহিত্য চর্চার একটা বিরাট একটা ভূমিকা আমরা দেখতে পাচ্ছি একটা গৌরবময় অধ্যায় কিন্তু সৃষ্টি হচ্ছে এই জন্য যারা ইতিহাস চর্চা করেন তারা বলছেন যে এলিজাবেথের যুগ হচ্ছে ইংরেজি সাহিত্যের স্বর্ণ যুগ কারণ এই যুগে ইংরেজি সাহিত্য যে রূপ পেয়েছে যে সমৃদ্ধি লাভ করেছে সেই সমৃদ্ধি বোধ আর কোনো যুগে এসেছিল কিনা আমি জানি না এলিজাবেথের যুগে ইংল্যান্ডে এত কবির আবির্ভাব হয়েছে তাদের কবিতাগুলো এত সুন্দর যা এখনো আমাদেরকে আমাদেরকে মানে কি বলবো অনুপ্রাণিত করে তোলে এই যুগে ইংল্যান্ড যেন মনে হচ্ছে যেন একটা গানের পাখি এডমান পেন্সা তার বিখ্যাত কাব্যগ্রন্থ ফেরি কইনে এই যুগেই তো রচনা করেছিলেন যারা ইংরেজি সাহিত্য নিয়ে পড়াশোনা করেন আমরা তো ইংরেজি সাহিত্য ছাত্র নই তবু সাহিত্য প্রেমী মানুষ আমরা এগুলো পড়ার চেষ্টা করি তাহলে এডমান পেন্সারের যে বিখ্যাত যে কাব্যগ্রন্থ ফেরি কইনি এটা এলিজাবেথের যুগীতে রচনা হয়েছে এই যুগে সর্বশ্রেষ্ঠ গীতি কবিতা লিরিক ধর্মী যে কবিতাগুলো সেগুলো রচিত হয়েছে গীতি কবিতার মধ্যে জনসন তার ফিলিপ সর্টনি হেইট পিল লজের নাম আজ আমাদের স্মরণ করতে হয় আলাপ সারে ওয়াই থার্ড ইংরেজি সাহিত্যের সনেটকে প্রবর্তন করেছেন কিন্তু এলিজাবেথের যুগের সব থেকে যদি আমার অন্তত মনে হয় এলিজাবেথের যুগকে যদি আমরা স্মরণ করতে চাই তাহলে আমরা নাটককে স্মরণ করব কারণ এই যুগে যে নাটক যে তৈরি হয়েছিল গ্রিস যে ধারা সফক্লিসের যে ধারা ধ্রুপদী নাট্যচর্চার যে ধারা সেই ধারাটা কিন্তু এলিজাবেথের যুগে একটা একটা পরিপূর্ণতা পেয়েছে এতে কিন্তু মানে কোনো ইয়ে নেই মানে কোনো সন্দেহ নেই এই যুগে তো সর্বশ্রেষ্ঠ নাট্যকার সকল যুগের সর্বশ্রেষ্ঠ নাট্যকার উইলিয়াম শেক্সপিয়ার তিনি তো তার হাতে ইংরেজি নাটক একটা যেন নতুন উৎকর্ষতা লাভ করেছে তিনি এলিজাবেথের যুগের যুগেতে তিনি রচনা করেছেন আমরা সেই ছোটবেলা থেকে যেগুলো পড়ে এসেছি মার্চেন্ট অফ ভ্যান ইজ লস্ট দ্বিতীয় রিসর্ট এই সমস্ত গ্রন্থগুলো তিনি রচনা করেছেন কবিতা তিনি রচনা করেছেন আমি যখন ইংল্যান্ডে যাই তখন ঠিক শেক্সপিয়ারের ওখানে যেতে পারিনি বলে নিজেকে খুব মানে দারুণ একটা মানে খারাপ লেগেছিল আর কি সময়ের অভাবের জন্য ওখানে যেতে পারিনি তবে দু চোখ ভরে আমি টেমস নদীকে দেখেছি যে নদীকে কেন্দ্র করে রোমান্টিজমের একটা দারুণ রূপ আমরা দেখতে পেয়েছি আমি ইয়েতে মানে কে বলো স্কটল্যান্ডে গিয়ে তোমার এডেনবার্গে গিয়ে সেখানকার যে সাহিত্য চর্চার আর যে প্রকৃতির যে দৃশ্য সেগুলোকে দেখে আমি কিন্তু খুব মোহিত হয়ে গিয়েছিলাম সুতরাং এই যে উন্নতি সেই উন্নতির ধারাগুলো নিশ্চয়ই আজকে আমরা শুনব আমাদের ছাত্রছাত্রীরা নিশ্চয়ই শুনবে তবে আমি আর বিশেষ কিছু বাড়াতে চাইছি না আমি আমার বক্তৃতাকে বক্তব্যকে খুব ছোট করে নিতে চাইছি আমি আবার ম্যাডামকে ছাত্রূপা ম্যাডামকে অনেক ধন্যবাদ জানাচ্ছি যে তিনি তার অমূল্য সময়কে নষ্ট করে আমাদের এখানে এসেছেন এবং তিনি আমাদের ছাত্রদের আগামীকালও শিক্ষা দিয়েছেন আজও তিনি শিক্ষা দেবেন আমি তাকে আর একবার শ্রদ্ধা গতকাল হ্যাঁ ভুল ভুল বলেছে ভুল বলে ফেললাম গতকাল তিনি দিয়েছেন আমার আশা করি আমার ছাত্রছাত্রীরা দারুণ উপকৃত হয়েছেন আমি আমার কলেজের যারা শিক্ষক মণ্ডলী আছেন আমার এন টি এস বন্ধুরা আছেন আমার ছাত্রছাত্রীরা রয়েছেন এবং যে টেকনিশিয়ানরা রয়েছেন তাদের যেমন শাহবাজ আলম সুমিত কর আমাদের সফিকুল ইন্দ্রনীল ভট্টাচার্য এরা যে সহজ সাহায্য এবং সহযোগিতার মাধ্যমেতে এই ওয়েবিনারটাকে সার্থক করার চেষ্টা করছেন তাদেরকে আমরা শুভেচ্ছা জানাচ্ছি ধন্যবাদ জানাচ্ছি আমি প্রত্যেককে আমি রিকোয়েস্ট করবো টু এভরি ওয়ান ইস টু ফলো দ্য কোভিড নাইনটিন রুলস সেভ ইউ 
তুমি নিজেকে বাঁচাও এবং অপরকে বাঁচাও কারণ তৃতীয় ঢেউ আসছে এখান থেকে আমাদেরকে একটুকু এই মহামারীর হাত থেকে আমাদেরকে বাঁচতে হবে আমাদের জীবনকে ভোগ করতে হবে কাব্য কবিতাতে নিজেদেরকে জারিত করতে হবে তবেই তো আমাদের জীবনের মূল বিষয়গুলোকে আমরা কিন্তু বুঝতে পারবো ওয়ান এগেন আই ওয়েলকাম ইউ টু আওয়ার কলেজ অ্যান্ড প্রে ফর দ্য গ্র্যান্ড সাকসেস অফ দিস ন্যাশনাল ফাইভ হিডার থ্যাঙ্ক মেনি থ্যাঙ্কস থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ স্যার থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাচ we we all know that our principal sir is a wonderful orator we all love to listen to him in the inaugural of any webinar because the issues that he delivered is no less important than a keynote address ajke guru guru purnima te apnake guru hisebe ami pranam janai ar sotti amra am sotti amra attobishito bangali kintu apnar ei mulloban je boktobbo gulo shegulo hoyto amra kono din bhulbo na sir so keep on inspiring us like this and ashirbad korun jate kore erokom webinar amra aro bhabishyote organize korte pari okay so uh, let me introduce the speaker uh, uh, professor sen uh, shotrupa sen is currently teaching uh, linguistics and uh, english language education at the school of uh, languages and literature nalanda university she has completed her Uh, masters and doctoral uh, dissertation in linguistics uh, from the english and foreign uh, languages university flu uh, hyderabad her doctoral research concerns socio phonological documentation of sileti and eastern indic uh, language in the north eastern india and bangladesh uh, she specializes in the fields of uh, theoretical uh, linguistics socio linguistics language teaching for adult learners her uh, area of research involves in the language and cultural conversation with the help of linguistic documentation and description uh, further she has qualified a celta training uh, by cambridge university for uh, teaching english language internationally so we are grateful to have you with us uh, ma'am uh, now over to you thank you uh hello everyone good a very good morning to you namaskar to all the colleagues and i hope uh on this auspicious day of guru purnima i am able to share my two sets okay so judging uh, yes i had a very productive session with the students yesterday and uh, judging by uh, their interest uh so i have sort of uh, made this <clears throat> today's uh, my, uh, my talk according to the level uh, according to the needs of the students today so uh, to the esteemed um academicians here so well this is for uh, the students today okay so uh, today uh, the topic we are going to talk about is history of english language i know we talk about history of english literature a lot in your you have history of english literature in your syllabus but uh, do we always talk about history of english language not very often yesterday we talked about like you know how different oh, uh, how wars and battles and infiltrations these uh, affect effect the genetic makeup of a language and that uh, and how uh, with each invasion we saw in the in terms of this excuse me is any uh, does anyone want to say something okay so yesterday we have seen uh, in the world language scenario that how different invasion has brought changes in the languages how different how languages evolve and they change into into a different form so uh, well uh, the because of uh, the reason one of the reason we can say is that english ferdinand de saussure uh, he uh, uh, he found out uh, 13 uh, 
uh, design features of uh, languages and in one of the language and he also said that a uh, language is like a living breathing entity languages language should be considered as a biological entity so uh, that the reason is that that a language uh, is born a language grows goes through changes and there uh, and a language dies as well so we can actually think of language as a biological entity so in the same way dinosaurs were also biological entity but dinosaurs are ex extinct similarly a lot of languages are extinct but uh, is it very desirable that languages go extinct because once a language is gone it uh, takes away a lot of things from the speakers it takes away the traditional knowledge and belief system and uh, the identity identity is a big part of, in anyone's life so it is very important that we adapt and learn to go with the uh, changing times as i said yesterday as we discussed yesterday that like uh, to preserve a language we need to we need to uh, have the salient features the idiosyncrasies of the particular language we need to guard that but at the same time open the door to uh, to the other languages that are uh, in the vicinity so that we can get rich so basically here we need to be in a uh, winning position so one of these languages uh, one of the languages which have become uh, so rich because it opened the door to other languages is english so english is basically the cockroach and not the <laughs> dinosaur so today we are go, uh, learning about history of english language i hope you can see uh, my screen yes yes we can see are you okay great yes so, yes yes why to study the history of english language why should we study in general to find out where english came from how it developed and how it came to have its present form right so of course we need to know where it came from how it changed and everything it also includes learning about relationship of english to its germanic neighbors and other european languages specifically to learn more about the different linguistic levels of the english language in their historical dimensions this includes the following uh, areas that is how was the spelling of english devised what principles governed it originally this helps in trying to grasp the inconsistencies which have arisen in the five centuries since the orthography was developed and so helps want to remember spellings easier now it is important to uh, for us to know the orthography the spelling how the writing system and everything but one thing please remember orthography that we uh, know the 26 uh, letters and the alphabet and everything is very different from the speech sounds yesterday we talked about certain speech sounds in english language so orthography and speech are very different so uh, when we talk about the traditionally uh, history traditional history of english language it more has to do with orthography how it is represented how the structure of language has changed and everything but at the same time change in sound is also a very important part in it oh uh, yeah uh, if i'm making it uh, full screen then i'm not able to see anything anyway i'm making it full screen for you so that is important so again how the, so how did the current pronunciation form that we talked about yesterday received pronunciation well again the current pronunciation tomorrow it might be different based on a lot of politics and economics anyway the uh, received pronunciation developed uh, developed in england and how does it relate 
to the vernacular forms of English, such as Kokonida, that is the city dialect of London. And then another reason why is grammar of English the way it is, or what has uh, in what has affected the grammar of English? We discussed about it yesterday, and how did the vocabulary gain its present form? We again discussed it yesterday, and today we'll get a, a little more insight into all these like you no know, uh, change of grammar, change of vocabulary and change in uh, uh, sounds all these uh, we'll get a little more insight about it okay how have different varieties of english arisen outside of england and what were the pathways along overseas forms of english developed in the colonial period to and to learn about techniques of historical linguistics how does one uh, re construct previous stages of language uh, how does one compare languages and what assumptions are legitimate about diachronic stages of a language? So here, historical linguistics doesn't really uh, deal with like, you know, the history of a particular language. It actually um, documents uh, uh, all the changes that a language goes through, how it develops, how it has been, uh, it has got influenced by other factors and how Things have uh, changed in within the speech community. How different varieties have developed. Uh, I do not believe in the word dialect. Dialect again. Di the word dialect is uh, related to prestige, and prestige is related to a lot of factors which are very uh, a little not very. Uh, what should I say? The uh, factors are uh, quite fluid. So well, but at the same time. Uh, for the presentation purpose, sometimes I I might use the word dialect for everyone's better understanding. Okay, uh, so yes, so this is the uh, thing about historical linguistics that we need to, when we uh, learn a particular language or when we learn the literature from that language, literature of that language, it, uh, it does... Uh, a race question in our mind that okay so this is what i'm reading now so and this is probably my predecessors read a uh, hundred years back and when we uh, take two texts from two different centuries the language is very different the way it's written though rather I mean, the registers are very different probably the registers of the uh, characters in the particular uh, language uh, particular literature piece or uh, the register of the author or the poet is very different and how do how did these changes happen a lot of things are to be considered different invasions different battles and change uh, and in fact uh, i believe like you know with the advancement of modern technology and everything and uh, especially after corona we have seen that a lot of new words and phrases have seeped into our vocabulary and now it's limited at the uh, at the level of vocabulary few years down the line these might get incorporated into the <clears throat> into the proper sent, uh, syntax of english language or probably it becomes a part of, it might become a part of the pragmatics however so th that's how things change uh, in case of a language, and it is important for us, the people who are learning about this language, who are practicing this language to know and to understand more about the phenomenon of sound change and ultimately gain insight into the structure of language in general and how speakers use it. Okay. I hope I'm audible now. Well, yes, ma'am, you are audible. You are, uh, you are audible. Yes, thank you so much. Okay. So now we know that why we need to know and learn about the history of the language that we are right now conversing in. So when we talk about uh, 
uh, history of India, English language, we broadly think about like, you know, three periods, Old English, Middle English and Modern English. So the fact that Modern English has been going on for a long time and the Modern English is self uh, uh, developing a lot. So, but however, uh, they, uh, these are the three basic big uh, periods that we consider when we talk about history of English language. Okay, before I say any, uh, before I go on, uh, this, uh, I would uh, want, I wanted to ask uh, if any, if you have idea of uh, uh, language families. Students, anyone, any idea about language families? Well, if we think about uh, India, if we think about India as a linguistic area, uh, we can see in India different types of languages are sp spoken. We uh, there are Hindi, uh, there are Hindi and uh, Indo-Aryan speakers uh, in the northern belt of India, and uh, the eastern belt of India mostly speaks the. Uh, a little uh, in not Indo-European, rather Eastern Indic languages, that is Bangla, Oriya. Again, Oriya is another uh, uh, important language because Oriya shows influence of Dravidian language, languages that are spoken in the southern part of India. And uh, yeah, Northeast India uh, speaks in Sino-Tibetan language families, but at the same time, uh, very strangely, it has uh, uh, some languages in Northeast India also has Afro influence. So we can find, we can uh, think that there is Afro Asian language family influence. So in the screen, you can see that uh, there are lots of uh, language families in the world. These are the major language families in the world, not everything. And uh, we can see that uh, uh, it's around 30, uh, 40% is Indo-European language family. So Indo-European language family is the biggest language family in the world and uh, are the languages we are speaking that also, uh, those also come under it, like our Bangla is somehow uh, related to Indo-European uh, language family because, well, it's an Eastern Indic language. So, well, Indic, it has Indic influences, uh, okay. So these are the uh, different major language families in the world. So let's talk about Indo-European language families. In Indo-European language families, uh, we have Indo-Iranian, Romance languages, Germanic languages, Scandinavian, Slavic, uh, et cetera, et cetera, a lot of languages. Okay, so yesterday we talked about uh, the, Rom uh, the influence of Romance and Scandinavian on English. So we can see that like in you know, a Romance uh, uh, languages have a lot more speakers than uh, proper, uh, than the Germanic group. So what are Romance languages? Romance languages are Italian, Spanish, French, uh, all these langu uh, languages are Romance languages. And Germanic language, uh, Germanic languages, English comes under Germanic language family. So, I mean, divisions of Germanic languages. So here, these were, uh, these are the old, uh, how old Germanic languages were there and how these are the present day languages. So not, uh, we had North Germanic, East Germanic and West Germanic. So North Germanic, uh, the runes and Old Norse have developed into Icelandic, Faroe, Swedish, Norwegian and Danish language. East Germanic language, uh, language that was Gothic doesn't exist anymore. 
and West Germanic languages, uh, the Old High German has become High German, that is Yiddish. Uh, uh, Old English has developed into English. Old Saxon has developed into Low German, Old Frisian, Frisian, Old Low Franconian in Dutch, Flemish, Africans, uh, uh, Afrikaans. Okay, so these are the divisions of Germanic languages and the West Germanic language that was English that has come into uh, being as English that we speak in the modern day. So this is a map of, of the Germanic languages that exist today. You can take a screenshot if you want uh, to the students. Okay. So now let's get into the history. So the last, uh, uh, the first, uh, to, let's talk about the Old English. Uh, what do we think about, uh, what do we know about Old English? What do we feel about? So when we talk about Old English, we know that it talks about the relationship of English and German and also how the division of languages have come into being, structure of Old, in, uh, in case of world, uh, Old English, the structure, the language structure started developing and also the literature and society, how it was in Old English period. And the most important, that was the Old English epic bevels. And also we know that uh, Old English time was filled with the Scandinavian uh, invasion and the Anglo-Saxon chronicles, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, compared to that, this Middle English period is pretty interesting. Uh, Middle English period, in Middle English pre period, we see a transition from old to middle, and this is the first time the notable changes are happening. So when a language uh, keeps uh, being used, uh, is being used by a particular linguistic community. So basically, because every, every person has a different register and somehow it affects the overall uh, makeup, uh, overall fa fabric of this uh, language. And hence, uh, cha uh, subtle changes are always made in the language. But it was uh, when in the Middle English period, we could see that like you know, notable changes were noticed and also the notable changes happened because well uh, French influence the Normandy uh, sorry the Anglo-Norman period and also at this time in the Middle English uh, uh, Middle uh, Middle English period the spe uh, spelling practices uh, started and also the great vowel shift that is it's the first time people started noticing about the sound changes and how English pronunciation is being affected due to this. And also, this is the time a lot of uh, literature came, like Chaucer's major work came, uh, came during this uh, Middle English period and also religious writings, like you know, new forms of Bibles that came up in the Middle English period. And also uh, mythology uh, was a very important factor in the literature of Middle English period. And also uh, the, um, what should I say? the fashion, well, at that point of time, it was a fashion which became a necessity. The you know, fashion of writing le private letters started in Middle English period. I I don't know about what used to be in the old English period, whether the uh, letters were pretty public, but then the <clears throat> fashion of writing private letters started in this period. Then we come to the modern period. Modern period uh, is marked by the introduction of 
printing and the Roman script, that is uh, the English orthography that we study today. It's, I'm talking about the early modern period and in early modern period is extremely dominated by uh, Lang English at the time of Shakespeare. So and there were a lot of uh, uh, quote unquote hard words that we don't use anymore today. And uh, uh, this is the time uh, the dictionary system started rising. And also this is the English in Augustan age and uh, the prescriptive, uh, prescriptive grammar that developed. Uh, so not I would really uh, appreciate if you can ask me questions uh, later. Thank you so much. So this, this is the time. <clears throat> The Augustan age, uh, the English was in Augustan age, and the prescriptive grammar uh, that we know about grammar is of two types prescriptive grammar and descriptive grammar. Prescriptive grammar is like, you know, rules, okay? Uh, like uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of us have studied, uh, learned English in this prescriptive form that is like, you know, okay, these are the rules and you have to obey. Don't ask why. You might not get, always get a logical answer. So that was uh, that is prescriptive grammar and descriptive grammar is like you know sort of what we uh, call the modern English grammar and modern English grammar which tries to give a reason for a lot of uh, reason for everything. For example, why uh, we put uh, we use uh, the verb put for solid but for liquid we use uh, the verb pour. Uh, the reason is that it's very, uh, very interesting. The reason is the gravity, gravitational factor, and then how the gravitational factor uh, you, uh, is, uh, helps <clears throat> the water, uh, the liquid to get uh, to flow down, rather how an external force is also required to put. So, well, that is descriptive grammar, but uh, the prescriptive grammar uh, uh, began in the early modern period that is an 18th century and also uh, at this point of time the standard uh, people started feeling the necessity of a standard pronunciation because like you know for the court proceedings uh, court as in like you know not the law, court of law uh, at that point of time it was still very much king's uh, era of kings and queens so <coughs> for the, those court proceedings or oh, people started feeling the necessity of a, sorry, standard pronunciation. Oh, one second, please. Thank you. <coughs> so these are the um, things that mark the begin. Sorry, mark the beginning of. <clears throat> modern English period. Now, uh, 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 going through all the different periods, we can see that, like, you know, the, uh, the theme of changing period is language change. So, what are the views of language change? That is, models of language change, like, you know, how different, how language has changed in different period like you know what aspect of language has changed and uh, uh, how can we generalize and formulate a particular uh, uh, a way that okay this is the way the language has shifted like you know for example we have Grimm's law and uh, the great vowel shift in that we can make a, a, dis, uh, a generalized statement that okay uh, English uh, in middle Eng uh, middle ages has shifted from old English in such and such way and this great vowel shift uh, sort of summarizes that how the uh, English vowels have developed. So in that, uh, and also <clears throat> one very important reason for language change is language contact. Uh, uh, we, as we progress, we can see that uh, English has come in contact with a lot of other 
language families and lang- languages and hence the structure the phonology and the uh, and the lexicon everything has been influenced because of it and also there has been change in typology uh, typology and uh, grammar uh, grammaticalization these are the necessary factors that lead to such language changes okay <clears throat> so old english ranges from 450 to 1600 middle english is roughly from 1600 to 1500 and the modern english that is early modern english and modern modern english that actually starts from 1500 onwards <clears throat> so in old english peri- period period uh, we could see the invasion of uh, Ge- the, when how the germanic tribes came to england and the spread of christianity and the scandinavian inv- invasion these three were the main reason how old english came into being and how the different uh, the changes that we could say, uh, that happened in the old english period that was much pronounced in the middle english period okay <clears throat> so in old english period uh, so english uh, has been spoken in england since around 450 and to be more precise it was actually a set of varieties of Ge- west germanic that was spoken but we nowadays we call it english at that point of time it was only a variety of west germanic so after the anglo saxon invasion no one had an awareness of england as such uh, let alone the english okay so england as a landmass it was not a very well known concept at uh, during the anglo saxon invasion period time and with the establishment of the west saxon uh, kingdom in later centuries and with the court uh, which informed the uh, pivot point uh, pivot point of this kingdom a first inkling of the idea of english developed with the invasion of england by the danes that is after 18, after 800 it became more clear that the germanic tribes in england were separate from their fellows in the continent and in scandinavia okay among the different in the old english period different uh, dialects well rather i would say geographical variants are recognizable for example northumbrian in north anglian in the middle and west uh, saxon in the uh, southern england due to political significance of west saxon in the late old english period that is uh, roughly after 9th century and the written form of this particular uh, variety that developed into something like a standard well we know that how to how does a language get the status of a standard language you get it money and power it becomes the standard the same thing happened with the west saxon uh, at that point of time so it's important to note that uh, it was uh, at this time it was winchester and not london that was the center of pol- power and politics of the entire uh, country the term used for the west saxon standard is queene which derives from greek and it means a common dialect uh, or a common variety that is a variety which was used in monasteries in parts of england outside of west saxony for the purpose of writing we know that religion play, always plays a major role in any uh, language development so as the principal sir had told us uh, in his lecture that how the romantic poetry that came into being the but that romantic poetry uh, if we think about the romantic poetry uh, tradition in bengal we have uh, vaishnav padavali and vaishnav padavali is 
obviously very rom uh, romantic uh, 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 of romantic genre but at the same time it is somehow uh, influenced by the religion uh, religion the bhakti uh, uh, the bhakti tradition so in every uh, country or every place we can see that like you know religion has a very big impact on the socio cultural fabric of that particular area and that is how the how the uh, the monas uh, the monasteries uh, uh, played a big part in standardizing a particular language uh, variety in the old english period so <clears throat> when we talk about uh, we have standard we have a sort of standard uh, variety in terms of this old saxon, saxon but at the same time uh, it was common to divide england into four uh, dial uh, dialect or varieties areas of the old english period first of all um, it is important to note that by england that part of uh, mainland britain uh, here i mean the mainland britain which does not include scotland wales and cornwall so here we are talking about only the main england these three areas were celtic from the time of the arrival of the celts uh, some number of centuries bc and uh, remain so well in the middle english period the dialect areas of england can be traced back quite clearly to the germanic tribes uh, which came and settled in britain from the middle of the 5th century onwards there were basically three tribal groups among the earlier settlers in england the angles the saxons and the jutes the angles came from the area of anglin that is roughly cheswick or uh, holston of today that we call the angles the uh, cheswick holston the saxons from the area of east and central lower saxony and the jutes came from the german peninsula which forms the west denmark of today of these three groups the most important are the saxons as they establish themselves as the politically dominant force in the old english period uh, a number of factors contributed to this not least the strong position of the uh, west, uh, west saxon, uh, saxon kings chief among these being alfred king alfred uh, he was one of the very powerful uh, saxon kings and he used to rule uh, around in the late 9th century the west saxon dialect was also uh, the strongest in the scriptorias that is in the places where manuscripts were copied and written originally so we can see the saxons uh, established themselves as the most powerful forces and that is how the writing system that um, the old uh, the west saxon uh, variety is being preferred in the writing system <clears throat> a variety of documents have nonetheless been handed down in the language of the remaining areas of course notably from northumbria a number of do documents are extant uh, which offer us a fairly clear picture of the of, uh, of that linguistic area at this point one should also um, be aware uh, that central and northern part of england is linguistically fairly homogeneous was it was fairly homogeneous in the old english period and it was uh, termed as anglia to differentiate sections within this area one speaks of uh, mercia which is the central re uh, region and northumbria which was the northern part that is north of the river river humber if we see the map uh, map of england during uh, old english period we can see that okay i'll just show you the map right now so here you can see uh the how angles and other different uh, varieties were in parts of england at the time of germanic invasion
or rather i sh- i would rather show you other pictures as well that will help you to get a better idea so here this is england at the time of germanic invasion this was england at the time of Gen- germanic invasion and this is how uh, how germanic tribes took roots in the 5th century the jutes came from jutland and settled in kent uh, saxons came from from the area of present day lower saxony and settled largely south of the river thames the angles came from the lower part of the jutland peninsula which is now cheswick holston in germany and settled in central and northern england so here uh, the lines that are drawn are very approximate so many of the settlers may have crossed the north sea from the area of present day belgium as this would have involved the shortest sea journey but then uh well this is a very pres- uh, presumptive and uh, only representation purpose only okay so that is how uh we can see that the germanic tribes came another important uh, thing that cha- uh, that was uh, in this old english period was that uh scandinavian influence scandinavian influence we can call it like the viking uh invasion or rather the viking influence so the vikings during the viking period the territory of england was divided into scandinavian and the west saxon sphere of influence uh the scandinavian uh, the part where the, the we could see that uh, scandinavian influence that was called as danelaw in this region the greatest influence of the vikings of the uh, old english uh, vikings uh, was felt in the old english period even many scandinavian place names are at, uh, attested in the north of england so this is the time now uh, we know that in old english period the uh beowulf came at the same time at this uh, in old english period the uh different uh sh- sh- poetry the poetry form also developed in the old english period so uh we uh, many of us might know this uh prayer that we say that uh, sometimes children say in school that our father in heaven holy be thy name so this is one of the uh, things that came in the old english period and it's very different uh, i'll just show you i don't know how many of you can read it but just see and uh, if you want you can take a screenshot of it so this was how english was sort of pronounced as uh, in the old english period and uh, some of the uh, letters that were used at that period have been changed in in terms of phonetic symbols because those were becoming unpronounceable so you can see that how english has changed how much english has actually changed these days so now let's come to middle english period so <clears throat> in the old english period we uh, we knew uh, we could see that west saxon uh, version was the most important they had the money they had the influence they had the power so that became the standard uh, variety but after the invasion of england by the normans in in 1066 uh, that uh, standard uh, prestige started waning due to natural language changes and it was uh, dealt 
it was dealt a death blow. Uh, Norman French became the language of English court and clergy. English sank to the level of Petoy. So Petoy is the unwritten form of a language, uh, un, uh, unwritten form or unwritten variety. So with the, because the script uh, used to capture the sounds of this Norman French, uh, the French influence. So with the loss of England for the uh, French uh, in 1204, English gradually emerged as a literally uh, language again. So we can see that when uh, Normandy, because of Normandy uh, invasion, English uh, lost its status. But again, when French lo uh, lost England in 1204, English again started getting its glory back. For the development of the later standard, it is important to note that one, it was London, uh, which was now the center of uh, the century. In Middle English, the power has shifted. Now the London is the center and that printing is introduced to England in the late 15th century in uh, precisely in 1476 by Caxton. Fourteen seventy-six by Caxton. This uh, latter fact contributed more than any single factor uh, to the standardization of English. It is obvious that for the production of, of printing uh, funds, fonts, a standard form of the language must be agreed upon. This applied above all to spelling, an area of English uh, which was quite chaotic in the pre-printing days of more middle English period. So, well, basically since uh, people did not have a particular model to follow, a uh, lot of uh, spellings for one particular word came and it was a chaotic, uh, it was a chaotic situation. So, of course, uh, in uh, the introduction of printing, gave at least uh, ha gave a standard spelling system. So in uh, we all know that when during Norman invasion, the most important is the uh, William the Conqueror uh, the, and how he uh, did the Norman uh, invasion and also the bio tapestry that uh, depicts the scene from Normal, uh, Norman invasion. I'll just show that, the tapestry, the pictures of this tapestry. So Middle English period uh, also uh, showed a lot of uh, variety or rather uh, or dialect uh, of English that was spoken. And it was sort of a continuation of Old English. The most important extra linguistic fact for the development of Middle English varieties uh, that the cap capital of country was moved from Winchester that was in the Old English period to London by William the Conqueror in his attempt to diminish the political influence of native English. So one of the important is uh, important variety is the Northern variety. It is the continuation of Northern Brian variant of Old English. And in Middle English times, Engl uh, English uh, had spread to uh, 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 low land that we call uh, today Scotland and indeed uh, led to a, uh, a certain literally tradition developing there at the end of the Middle English period, which has been continued up to the present time. That with, uh, of course, there were breaks in between, but then that is how the language felt. Characteristic, it's velar stopped are, reta are retained. That is like, you know, not palatalized. 
okay for example the velar stop that is like you know k and g uh, k and g which were a very important part in important sounds in middle english period we can see it uh, even today and palatalized is like you know when we say kya and ge so uh, no uh, the modern english doesn't show the uh, palatalized uh, variant and the reason is that well it retains the characteristics of the velar uh, characteristics of velar stops that was uh, a very important uh, sound development uh, phoneme development in middle english period okay next came kentish we know in old english period the about the influence of kent so it is uh, it is pretty understandable that kentish would dev, uh, would be a major variety so this was the most uh, this is the most direct continuation of old english old english variant and has more or less the same geographical distribution and the characteristics of the most uh, notable uh, to most notable features were the existence of uh, e and uh, these two vowels the long vowels and short vowels distinction that we discussed yesterday the uh, the re retention of long vowels the the long uh, usually in old english period the most uh, majority of the vowels were very longish longish in terms of uh, uh, time period uh, uh, required for production so in uh, middle english period the kentish variant uh, kept uh, some of the uh, long long vowels and so called the initial softening which uh, caused fricatives uh, which is uh, how the modern day fricative sounds have developed fricative sounds such as like you know f v sh s z these sounds have developed in the modern in modern english that is also uh, because some variant in middle english uh, had uh, started with this softening feature and then of course there were there was southern variety southern variety that is west saxon is the forerunner of this southern variety of middle english it's important to note that the area covered in the middle english period is greater in the greater than in the old english period as inroads were made into celtic speaking cornwall so this area becomes linguistically uninteresting in the middle english period because well it was uh already known and also it shared features with both kentish and west midland dialects so west midland uh the uh, it was the most conservative of all the varieties in the middle english period and it was fairly well documented in literary works it is also western half of, of the old english variety uh, of the area mercia so characteristics the retention of the old english rounded vowels y uh, and y yeah. in the old uh, and the east had been uh, unrounded to e and a repeatedly so round vowels uh, are when we do this rounding of the mouth and unrounded are like you know when we have to spread the mouth so yes west midland variety kept these uh, rounded vowels and east midland this is uh, uh the latest standard developed to be precise the uh, the standard ar arose out of london variety of the late mid english period it's important to note that london dialect or london variety naturally developed into what is called cockney today uh, while the standard became less and less characteristic of a certain area and finally after 19th century become become became the sociolect which is termed as prosift pronunciation and characteristic is like you know in general those of the late embryonic middle english middle english standard it was very generic and this is the time of uh, chaucer's canterbury tales and i'm sure you all uh, have uh, you all know about 
uh, Chaucer's and introduction of printing press, of course. So it was by William Caxton in 1478. So the influ the reason, uh, the influence of uh, you know, introduction of printing was the standard, uh, like, you know, a standard model of spelling and uh, orthography, that is orthography and morphology. So, so this is the <clears throat> so a, a very important uh, uh, phonological change that shows the difference between the uh, different uh, the shows the evolution of English as a language is called the Great Vowel Shift. Okay, so in the major change to affect the sound system of Middle English is that which result in a realignment of the system of long vowels and diphthongs, which is traditionally known as the great vowel shift. Essentially, uh, long vowels are raised one level and two high vowels are diphthongs. Okay, we uh, talk, we learned about diphthongs yesterday. So when we say long vowels are raised, it means uh, that uh, uh, <clears throat> it, uh, it ha long vowels have a raised position because of the prolonged uh, time of uh, production. So this shift took several centuries to complete and it's still continuing in Cockney, that is, we know as London speech. The shift of short U to a lower level at the present day Southern English, but. So uh, the U changes into another but, uh, and the, which is, which you can uh, characterize as the like, you know, the inverted V, but the U, U changes into inverted V. That is how the vowel has shifted. Like uh, people have started uh, using uh, their tongue in more flexible ways and they are touching different parts of the uh, mouth. So hence the great vowel shift. And uh, yeah, it uh, started uh, and the example uh, started around in 17th century and it's continued till. I'll show you uh, some examples of great power shift. So here we can see that how the vowels that were used in the 1300 and, and uh, how things have changed in today. So here you can see these uh, the uh, those where we have we see the two dot symbols. These are the long vowels, and uh, and these uh, when we say uh, see the uh, presence of two vowels together, they are called diphthongs. So this is short u. This is long u. These are longs. These. Well, here we don't see any sh uh, any short much. Uh, it's not that all these vowels are gone. They uh, still exist in some of the other uh, languages in the world. You can take a screenshot if you want of this particular slide. And this is, was also uh, the uh, the Middle English period was also the time of this Saint uh, this King James Bible in 1611. <clears throat> so now let's come to modern in, uh, the early modern English or modern English. The dialect of present day English can be seen as the continuation of the dialect areas or the variety of areas which established themselves in the Old English period. The, the, uh, the division of the uh, of these varieties of the narrower region of England into a uh, number one uh, northern to central and uh, a subdivided southern region that has retained to the present day. The linguistic study of uh, dialects of England goes back to 19th century uh, when as an offspring of Indo-European studies, research into rural varieties of major European languages was considerably developed. 
the first prominent figure in english dialectology uh, was uh, alexander ellis and uh, he was uh, present in mid 19th century followed somewhat later by joseph bright uh, in the late 19th and early 20th century the former that uh, the former uh, alexander ellis published a study of english dialects and the la latter uh, joseph wright uh, still uh, used grammar of english uh, varieties at the beginning of the present century it was not until the dialect first under the auspices of eugene death and later harold uh later uh, uh and uh, letter of harold orton that uh, such intensive study of uh, different rural varieties was carried out uh, carried out the result appeared in the series of publication in the 1950s and 1960s if anyone is interested you can obviously uh, look it up i'll not take too much of your time uh, discussing about those okay Uh, the main divide between the north and south can be drawn by using the pronunciation of the word but we discussed the word but either it were it was a uh, it has a sound u that is in the north or the lowered and unrounded realization typical of rp receive pronunciation in the center of south of the middle of the no, uh, modern english period so that is represented in terms of the inverted v an additional isogloss in the use of dark l we talked about dark l yesterday uh, in the south it was uh, used in the uh, south and the clear l that we say l the uh, sound l l in the north the south can be divided by the use of the syllable final r r which is to be found in the southwestern dialects but not in the southeastern the later show initial softening as single father think with uh, the voiced initial sound z v and t respectively so uh, we know that modern english is uh, very much uh, characterized by uh, uh, shakespeare and uh, uh, with uh, from shakespeare's work to today's well my favorite is murakami so when we talk, uh, uh, when i read uh, shakespeare at the say as i read murakami i feel that oh well there is so much of change in language so much of change in the grammar so much of change in uh, in terms of spelling and syntax and everything i feel modern english period needs uh, further work and for in yesterday how the french influence gave rise yes it was a french influence ma'am i'd like to ask a question yes please could you please put it in the chat box and perhaps it would take a bit more time that's why i am asking ma'am can you hear me properly yes um ma'am you were talking about uh, the indian languages and you were saying something about oriya being uh, the bridge i mean i as i perceived it oriya be seemed like it was a sort of a bridge between the dravidian and the aryan languages so ma'am no i didn't say that it's a bridge i said that there is a little dravidian influence that is seen being uh, having a little influence and rather having some instances of influence and being a bridge are very different things okay ma'am thank you and ma'am i have another question um yep. there is one uh, the i mean uh, anglo saxon invasion when that happened um mm -hmm. the, what was the main reason that made the saxons uh, uh, being in the monarchy i mean angles were much more in number many more in number when they settled so, in india so uh, there were some sources that uh, say that uh, probably they were uh, invited to help the uh, uh, keep out the invaders from scotland and ireland 
and another reason may be because there is uh, their uh, land were often uh, flooded and uh, it was difficult for them to do any cultivation or probably well they were greedy thank you ma'am Contribution of Shakespeare in English language, uh, so not it will take a long time uh, to talk about co contribution of Shakespeare in in, the, in English language. But as we can say that Shakespeare was Shakespeare is considered the father of modern English language, and it is a. Uh, 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 the different words that he used uh, have become uh, uh, the standard. So uh, he is uh, uh, famed for coining uh, more than 1,500, around 2,000 completely new words which are still being in use. So of course, his contribution has only made uh, the English language sorry, richer, not only in terms of literally values, but at the same time, but it also it has made the dictionaries fatter. Anything and, else? Uh, yep, uh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes I'm all, actually, I'm also waiting for others to type their you know, questions at least. Yeah. 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 What about the other students? Where are they? So meanwhile, I'll just, uh, uh, meanwhile, other students. Uh, oh, there, there's a question coming up. Long oh, one, right. Okay. Uh, when a language is influenced by another language, they borrow some words from that language. So the people of that language who borrow the words don't face any problem. I mean, uh, in the case of con convention or something like that, convention as in? Okay, what is the disadvantage of uh, 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 having known words. Deepan Mitra, when ma'am is asking you, you can please speak out. No issue. Yeah. Uh, so, Deepan Mitra, uh, conversation. Okay. So, what do you want to know? Uh, is the language which is borrowing word that is facing problem or the language which is giving out the word that uh, that is facing no, problem? No, ma'am. No, the language which is borrowing. Uh, now, uh, uh of course there are uh, okay now think about uh, the modern day uh, the modern day bangla and how much you use the english words in it for example uh, one of the uh, very famous uh, one of the like you know generation gap uh, defining word uh, that i feel uh, today is memes so uh, probably you can uh, talk about memes and you can actually talk in terms of uh, how you speak in memes, but it is very different, difficult to decipher for a person of the same language speaking. Uh, probably uh, it's difficult to decipher what you mean by these memes by your parents or, the, or anyone from your uh, parents' generation. So yes, of course, there are different factors uh, which are uh, which uh, are into play when uh, uh, a particular term from a different language is being incorporated into a language. And yep, that is how it works. And of course, there are different sort of um, uh, we call that repair strategy. And one of the biggest repair strategy is like you know changing the uh, working with different, uh, working with uh, changing the, the sound uh, structure of that uh, particular word. For example, school. Uh, there are many Bangla speakers who called is school, right? So school, sir, ka, this, con, uh, the, this, this, like, you know, sir and ka, both are uh, consonant sounds, and uh, there are speakers uh, who are not very comfortable with. Uh, pronouncing a consonant cluster at the very beginning of a syllable. 
so for that they use uh, a vowel and again you can say train a lot of uh, or people of older generation would call it terrain or things like that so that is how people break up people uh, take up that particular word and make changes in their own way to make it a part of their uh, verbal repertoire thank you ma'am you welcome so to and uh, to answer somnath's question i'll just give you just three uh, instance so before shakespeare time this written english uh, was not standardized so he sort of uh, his work sort of uh, gave people a model of standard model to follow uh, and also <clears throat> he coined a lot of words uh, which we use uh, even our day, today in our daily life lonely frugal all these or dwindling these were very uh, noble words that were uh, coined by him so that we use even today and also we always talk about breaking the ice and hearts of gold and all these phrases phrases uh, the modern day phrases were uh, a lot of uh, majority of them were coined by shakespeare and poetry literature we can't just think of english literature without shakespeare's work so yes shakespeare has not only made the uh made the coffers of english uh, literature richer it also has uh, his works also have made the publications houses also richer in terms of fab dictionaries Uh, any other and, questions? And one more thing to add, Swaturup. I think you know, uh, you know, uh, to uh, the, to 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 study or to assess the you know influence of Shakespeare um, in, in the evolution mm. of English language alongside you know literature. I think we have to mm. you know, still go back to to the days of yes. Chaucer, when 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 he Chaucer when he used to you know, borrow uh, extensively from from French and Latin. Uh, sources, right? Their 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 literature and all, like Roman de la Rose and all, and yeah, it, it's it's a long history. So definitely, it will take at least an, one more lecture or so. Uh, so let's you know. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Move on, move on to to the next question. If we have any, I'm yes. just waiting for the students to type, but they are not typing yet. That's the thing. So meanwhile, we can you know just request uh, the faculty members of our college. And we also have with us the faculty. Yes, so I request you know uh, all of you to please come up with you know your questions. And yes, please, 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 you know, just ask the speaker. She is eagerly waiting for some questions. So thank you. <laughs> Just one second, my uh, the uh, the charge of my laptop is gone. I'll just keep it on. Yeah, sure. sure. Yes, I'm back. Ask me. So I can see Bishwanath here. I can see. Uh, Susan today is also here. I think I just saw him right now. Yeah, uh, Devaruti is there. Yeah, uh, and uh, our principal sir is there. So please, please ask sir. Yeah, How many words did Shakespeare invent? Uh, it is said that 
he invented more than 1500 around 17 to 1800 sorry i don't have a particular number for you at this moment but i can give you that rough estimate thank you चेस्टा कर so i'm again asking the students if you have any questions please raise so we have a question finally okay sorry mm, yeah sorry for lazy asking Oh, are all population models them on intelligible? Oh well, you need to really know old English and modern German very, very well, and uh, you need to make a correlation between them because you would find certain similarity. But I don't think modern German is very much alike old English. But then again, if you have knowledge of uh, the Sound system of both Old English, Modern English, Old German, Modern German, and uh, you know how Modern German has developed from the Germanic languages. So, yeah, probably you can make a correlation. anyone else a for the question a problem in typing you can ask yes sir yes please sir mm -hmm. sir bolun sir please sir বলছি যদি কোশ্চেন যদি না থাকে তাহলে আমাদের এটা বিয়ে করে দাও অনেক কি বল তাহলে তাহলে স্যার ওয়াইন্ড আপ করি আস্তে আস্তে হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ আস্তে আস্তে হ্যাঁ यस सर so i think minakshi is here and i would like to you know request minakshi to give the vote of thanks and i take this you know opportunity at, uh, to thank the speaker once again and our respected principal sir for always lending a supportive hand and for always you know just encouraging us to you know organize you know such events so thank you sir thank you ma'am now minakshi all of yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you um i feel very grateful uh, the organizers of the webinar for uh, giving me this opportunity for delivering a vote of thanks uh, for today's program attending both uh, the lectures of ma'am uh, we re actually realized how significant a role language plays in our lives and especially what is the significance of english as a globally communicating language very beautifully uh, dr shatrupa shen has mapped out the entire trajectory of how this language uh, developed as a living being 
Um, it's not a question, but a comment of some sort. Actually, I was uh, waiting for my turn. And uh, inquisitiveness is not a very good thing always, but when you have a good speaker in front of you, you can't help it. So I just wanted to say that uh, I'm really intrigued by this idea of language as a living being. So okay. uh, English as a language, I think somewhere it has got this advantage of traveling. I mean, it has this advantage of crossing the territorial boundaries, which somehow the vernacular languages of India, and at the same time, the regional languages of the other countries, they could not avail. So in such a situation, I mean, can we say that English, is, English somewhere has got this advantage over the other languages, or this other languages faced a setback? So is English a more living language than others? I mean, this, uh, if you talk about the dynamism, in terms of the dy dynamism, of course, of course, but at the same time, English has uh, got setbacks. English has travels. English, English has uh, English is very opportunistic. It knows what to take and how to take and how to turn things into its advantage. And so, I feel all our languages can uh, be alive for a long time and can flourish with this attitude. I yeah. said yesterday, and I firmly believe that we need to open the doors to others, but at the same time, maintain our idiosyncrasies. With these two, we also can be cockroaches and not dinosaurs. Dinosaurs were big, gigantic, but they are extinct. Cockroaches are there since the beginning of time. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I mean, um, can we say that uh, we can... Uh, Imagine a future where there will be a concept of language equity, where each language uh, can have this uh, possibility of growing and evolving the way, the way in which the European languages did. Uh, of course, but again, uh, uh, when we are thinking about a language equity, a very, uh, or rather I would say, push family situation, <laughs> again, it depends upon a lot of political, economic yeah, matters. You could see that, like, you know, with no, when Normandy invasion was there, English lost its status. But then again, when they came into power, then again, they started putting their, putting their foot down and started, like, you know, going all over the world and uh, establishing its supremacy. So, yeah. Money, power, and politics. Yeah. Okay, we have one more question here. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Colonization. Yes, colonization has made English the, rather I would say, lingua of the world. You know, there were uh, countries like, you know, Japanese, uh, J Japan and Korea. You know, the, there were countries and Russia as well that uh, they felt they were enough with their own languages. But then you must, you should see how many international houses have been set up in all these countries and how much of they are uh, like, you know, sort of begging uh, English speaking people to come and teach their children. So, yeah. So basically, yes. Uh, Fortunately or unfortunately, English has taken this place to become a lingua franca. And also, somehow, I feel that uh, in a post-globalization world, where the world is basically within, the, within someone's hand, and if you want to talk to someone, maybe if I have to talk to a person in North Pole, which language would I use? That person needs to know my language and my uh, and I need to know that person's language. Sometimes it might not be possible. So sometimes people might use one uh, common language. And yes, English has taken the space of that common language. And also to um, answer uh, Professor Bridger Shankar Bhattacharya's answer, uh, can we think of one language in distinct future? No, I really do not support the idea of having one language, this, like, you know, the whole one language, one nation, one language, one thing. No, because it again takes a 
uh, robs the speakers of their identity, of their ethnicity, of their culture, everything. It is like, you know, sort of imposition, cultural, uh, it, uh, it establishes a cultural imposition. So for uh, the way we use uh, uh, the Latin terms for scientific purpose, probably we can use English for communication purpose. Yeah. And Me I am of this opinion that everybody should learn how to write in IPA so that they can represent any language and other person who, even if the person can't speak that language, doesn't understand, but at least can read and find some correlation, some understanding. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, it's uh, really been a... Okay, we have another question here. <laughs> Yes, of course, there is a lot of difference between American English and British English in terms of the way they are, uh, in terms of the pronunciation, the vowels. Uh, uh, the uh, main difference lies with the pronouncing with, of the vowels. And at the same time, the intonation is very different. And certain words, of course, uh, these two countries have different history, different, uh, you know, they have... Uh, their own uh, like national uh, own uh, culture of the country and of course that is how things will be different even in terms of american if you say in american uh, the way a person from new york speaks it's very different uh, from the person who comes from the one of the southern states southern states english probably like you know the main uh, the uh, like in you know, a hotspots of American, the these uh, Washingtons and uh, uh, New York or, Se or Seattle people won't even understand. Uh, they don't even understand that uh, southern people uh, how the southern people speak. And yeah, so for for them sometimes it becomes very different. And at the same time, New England uh, these areas, their their language is much more uh, Britishized. So yep. There are differences. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you. Yes, Manakshi. If there are any more questions, because now we are coming up with a lot more questions, I would um, like to ask you if there are any questions from the listeners, uh, then please ask, or otherwise we can wrap up the session. So uh, I think it's much of a session. It's been a uh, pleasure to uh, have you here, to know so much about the intricacies of uh, linguistics, the politics of linguistic uh, dimensions, the historical, political, economic factors that influence the dynamism involved uh, in this language. So uh, very beginning on the behalf of our college, and especially our department, I would like to express my deep gratitude towards the honorable speaker of today's event, Dr. Shatarupa Shin, an eminent scholar of language and linguistics for consenting to deliver the lecture and to enlighten us. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sparing your precious time from your busy schedule. I hope that we shall be meeting again. We can have you in our college and we can again have such insightful uh, discussions. Thank you so much, ma'am. So at the same time, I would like to pay my deep gratitude and warm regards to our respected principal, Sir Dr. Minal Kanti Chottopadhyay, for constantly supporting us, encouraging us for organizing such events. Thank you so much, Sir, for your cooperation and for your paternal guidance to all of us. Actually, today I'm really awestruck at the beginning of uh, the event by listening to Sir's uh, inaugural address and how intensive and extensive knowledge uh, Sir has about English language. Because we have always been listening uh, to his deep knowledge on history. So, Aboshui Sir, college khulle pade, college ashle pade, ek din aapno shate boshe onik kichu jante par boe vapar ne. Sar shate yami guru purni par pronam jane. Next, uh, I would like to thank the organizers of the webinar and my dear colleagues, Mr. Krishanu Odhikari and Mr. Vidhan Mondal for their enthusiastic efforts to arrange everything and for arranging such an erudite scholar to whom we, can, we could listen today. 
at the same time i would like to thank all the faculty members of our department mr chandra dupun pal mr brajaraj pal and mr shomnath dotto i hope that with such united efforts and cooperation we can really do well and organize many more such events i would like to thank the technical committee mr shahabaz ahmed mondol sect department of mass communication mr indranil bhattacharji sect department of bangla and mr shumit kaur department of geography i'm really really thankful to this people because um, in spite of this lockdown this people uh, they have gone to the college and they are operating everything from the college itself so thank you so much for your support for your cooperation special thanks to teachers and scholars from other colleges who uh, have attended this webinar on the invitation from our principal sir and our colleagues thank you to each and every faculty member of other departments of our college for showing such a keen interest we really look forward to such an interdisciplinary approach and lastly thank you so much to my dear students after all everything is for you so thank you so much i hope that this tough time goes away soon and uh, we can meet again thank you so much so with this i think we must wind up here uh, and i would you know like to you know request our principal sir to you know just uh, say a few words before we conclude the session thank you sir thank you i am indeed happy to be present here at the closing session of this very important national webinar on the history of english literature i compliment the english department special thanks atur prishanu adhikari vidhan mandal minakshi pal chandra tapan pal bajaraj pal and somnath dotto for organizing a national webinar on such a contemporary and highly relevant issue congratulations to all participate in the national webinar as speaker dr satulupa sen ta konek obinandan ebong dhonnobad and guest we have learned a lot from their discussion and we have prospered thanks you to all the teachers nts gp members gp presidents students and technician specially sahabat safikul sumit jagannath and indranil bhattacharjo who made this webinar a success i am concluding my speech by congratulating everyone i wish everyone good health during this critical epidemic situation thank you apnara sokoli bhalo thakun shustho thakun satirupa madam ke onek onek dhonnobad tini ekti prachin bishwavidyaloyer shonge nijeke sompikto korechen eigulo amader khub gorber bishoy khub bhalo lagche je apnar lecture ami shunlam khub bhalo legechi ebong যেটা সব থেকে বড় কথা যে প্রত্যেকটা জাতির একটা নিজস্ব ইতিহাস আছে প্রত্যেকটি ভাষার সেরকম একটা ইতিহাস আছে তাই ইতিহাসটা জানা খুবই জরুরি কি সংস্কৃত ভাষাই হোক কি ইংরেজি ভাষাই হোক কি যে কোনো ভাষাই হোক এই ইতিহাসটা না জানলে পারে শিক্ষা কিন্তু কখনোই সম্পূর্ণ হতে পারে না আপনি অত্যন্ত প্রাঞ্জল ভাষাতে খুব সুন্দরভাবে এটা আমাদের ব্যাখ্যা করেছেন আপনাকে অনেক ধন্যবাদ জানাচ্ছি আগামী দিনে আপনি আসুন বৈষ্ণব তীর্থ আগেই বলেছি যে রোমান্টিক কবি জ্ঞানদাসের জন্মভূমিতে আপনি আসুন ভালো লাগবে আপনার কারণ আপনার সাহিত্যের সাহিত্যের ছাত্র কারণ প্রতিটি জিনিসের সঙ্গে প্রতিটি জিনিসেরই একটা তুলনামূলক একটা সম্পর্ক আছে আর এটা আমাদের কাছে খুব ভালো করে শুনতে হয় যে শেক্সপিয়ার তো নো ডাউট দারুণ নাট্যকার এতে কোনো সন্দেহ নেই কিন্তু 
আমাদের ভুললে চলবে না নাট্যশাস্ত্রের ক্ষেত্রে কালিদাসকেও আমরা কিন্তু কখনোই ফেলতে পারি না সেজন্য বলা হয়ে থাকে যে শেক্সপিয়ার এবং কালিদাসের মধ্যে যে তুলনা কে বড় কে ছোট এই যে ব্যাখ্যা এই যে চিন্তা ভাবনা তিনি প্রাচ্যের কালিদাস না তিনি পাশ্চাত্যের শেক্সপিয়ার এই যে চিন্তা ভাবনাগুলো এগুলো কিন্তু আছে এগুলো আগামী দিনে আমাদের ছাত্রছাত্রীরা এগুলো পড়ুক একটা তুলনামূলক ভাবে পড়ুক তুলনামূলক সাহিত্যের মাধ্যমে পড়ুক তাহলে পরে আমার মনে হয় ভাষা সাহিত্য একটা নির্দিষ্ট জায়গায় পৌঁছাতে পারবে এটুকু আমি বলতে পারি সকলকে অনেক ধন্যবাদ ইংরেজি ডিপার্টমেন্ট খুব সুন্দর একটা সেমিনারের ব্যবস্থা করেছেন যারা আমাদের বাইরে থেকে এসেছিলেন তাদের বিজয় শঙ্কর ভট্টাচার্য আমাদের বিশ্বনাথ সাহা তিনি বর্তমান রাজ কলেজের অধ্যাপক এবং আমাদের বিজয় শঙ্কর ভট্টাচার্য তিনি একজন নাট্যকর্মী নাট্যমোদী মানুষ এবং আমাদের ইংরেজি সাহিত্যের এই এই দিন যে পড়াশোনা করে পুরোনো আমার কলিগ ডক্টর সুশান্ত বর্ধনকেও দেখছিলাম এই মুহূর্তে তাকে নেই তাদের সকলকেই আমরা আমাদের কলেজের তরফ থেকে অভিনন্দন এবং শুভেচ্ছা জানাচ্ছি যে আজকের এই বিশেষ দিনে গুরু পূর্ণিমার দিনে তারা আমাদের এসে এসেছেন আমাদেরকে সমৃদ্ধ করেছেন আমরা সকলেই ভালো থাকুন সুস্থ থাকুন এটুকু বলে আমি আমার বক্তব্য শেষ করছি কৃষাণু এবং তোমরা এরপর এই সেমিনারে সমাপ্তি ঘোষণা করতে পারো Meenakshi has already delivered the vote of thanks and finally I would like to thank mm. our respected speaker, uh, my friend from my Hyderabad days. Thank you, Satarupa. Thank you for accepting our invitation and thank you for, you know, giving thank us you for, your, your time for the last two days. And thank, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate you. We'd love to have you again and we hope that when our college reopens, you will come and visit us. We would like to have sure. you. Sure. sure. Thank you so much for inviting us. Thank, Thank you so much, you. sir. Uh, mm. uh, Professor Minal Kanti Chachapadhyay, sir. Thank you so much for having me. I really mm. enjoyed both the days. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 বলি তাহলে কি স্যার এখানেই শেষ করি এখানে এখানে শেষ করি আমরা বের হয়ে যাচ্ছি সকলে ভালো থাকুন সুস্থ থাকুন নমস্কার হ্যাঁ থ্যাংক ইউ থ্যাংক ইউ থ্যাংক ইউ অল হ্যালো সকলে ভালো থাকবেন সকলকে নমস্কার